Hello and welcome to my strategy guide for Space Base. My name is Sam and today we're going to go over the best ships to buy and how to balance building your engine versus finishing the game. While this game has a certain degree of luck involved, using the right strategies will help mitigate this and win you more games than you will lose. Just a quick note, this guide will only be covering the base game. Let's start off by exploring player count and how it affects gameplay. A game with a higher player count favours red rewards more than blue rewards. In a two player game, you get to roll the dice every second turn, which means your blue rewards are triggered every second turn. In a five player game, this is only the case every fifth turn. Because of the extra gold from red rewards, games with a higher player count will end sooner. A two player game will usually last for about 22 rounds, while a five player game only lasts for about 12 rounds on average. When playing with the lightspeed variant, this reduces game length by another 2 to 3 rounds. The value of income is determined by how many rounds are left in the game, so in higher play accounts, its value is immediately reduced. As you won't be able to cover every sector for red rewards, higher play account games are also more volatile and luck dependent. This all seems obvious when said out loud, but it's something that doesn't necessarily click until you think about it. I know this was the case for me. This makes it harder to give specific advice for 4-5 to five player games, as there aren't many wrong moves you can make. Every ship you buy adds value to your board through deployment. If you focus on low numbers or high numbers, the red rewards will still be fairly balanced as you don't have time to build a proper engine. The more important skill is knowing when to stop building your engine and start saving. For 2 or 3 player games, focusing on high numbers is a better strategy for a few reasons. The lower likelihood of rolling higher numbers can be boosted by ships that add to the sum of your dice, but more importantly, deployed arrow ships act as a double reward. If you stack cards on 10 for example, your normal odds of an opponent rolling a 10 are 3 in 36. If you have an arrow deployed on 9, then your odds of hitting sector 10 increase to 7 in 36. An arrow and a charge to increase dice value make the odds 12 in 36, or 1 in 3. Not only that, most of the time you will be getting the reward for Sector 9 as well. Arrows and dice manipulation ships increase your odds enough that the high number rewards heavily outweigh the risk. For 2 or 3 player games, this means picking higher numbers and arrows early is the goal. Higher numbers with income are preferred, as early income allows you to snowball. Arrow cards cost 5 gold each, so may or may not be worth saving for depending on what else is available. If none of these are available, then it's still worth buying a low number card to start your red reward earning. There's one ship in the second tier worth mentioning, which is the 8 cost buy a card ship. If this is available at the beginning, it may be worth saving for immediately. The gold reward it gives for being on a 2 is abnormally high, but being able to buy 2 cards in a round can become game breaking. It has great value throughout the game, but is better bought earlier than later. Ships that increase the sum of your dice should be taken a bit later on, as getting them too early can harm your blue rewards and ability to buy cards every round. Swap sector cards are gimmicks. Yes, they can work, but you can also just as easily ignore them and play conventionally. This combination looks appealing, but the reality is you need to roll three tens on your turn to trigger the effect. As the probability of rolling a 10 is 1 in 12 on average, this is going to take 36 turns, by which time the game will be over. If you get extremely lucky and trigger the effect in, say, 6 turns, then you're still faced with the odds of a 2 rolling on your turn, approximately 1 in every 3 turns. When you factor in the cost of the card itself, and the opportunity cost of not buying another card, it's extremely unlikely to pay for itself. In a similar vein, the You Win card is unreliable and a double-edged sword. Putting all your eggs in this basket makes you more reliant on dice rolls to win. Also consider that if you're in a 4 or 5 player count game, you will likely get first or last and nothing in between. You can use this ship to switch with sector 6 and then switch with sector 12, but by the time you are buying tier 3 cards the game will have progressed quite far and your window of opportunity to win will be small. Everyone loses 4 points is an annoying card, but not as strong as most people think. If it's on the blue side, your opponent is essentially using their whole turn to minus 4 points from you. It delays the game, but also stops the production they would have gotten if not for buying this card. 
it can still be worth it to buy, but by no means is it game breaking. Buying a card every round should be a goal early on, but sometimes you can be put in a position where you need to decide between gold and income. In a two player game, income is nearly always the correct choice, as you will have more rounds to benefit from it. In a five player game, the extra red rewards will most likely outweigh the benefit of one income. Consider player count and the amount of rounds that have passed when deciding. As a general rule for all player counts, overspending should be avoided at all costs. If you have 9 gold, it's very rare that a tier 1 card will be more worthwhile to you than a tier 2 card. Similarly, when you have over 20 gold, it's rare that a tier 3 card will give you more benefit than buying a colony card and securing points. One common average shared by most high ranked players is that their overspending is below that of the average player. Now that we've spoken about the cards, it's worth noting that it only takes 120 gold to win the game. Colony cards are all sold at an exchange rate of 3 gold for 1 point. It's always tempting to keep adding to your engine and win overwhelmingly with 20 income, but it's not necessary. You are racing to 40 points and it doesn't matter how pretty your board looks. When you should start focusing on points will vary depending on player count and how your opening has been. Ask yourself if the card you are buying will actually pay for itself before the game ends. If your income is low, then saving up for a high point colony card may be the right play. If you have a high income, like 8, then saving is less worthwhile, as each turn you don't spend you are costing yourself 8 gold. If you find you play most games with a fantastic engine and still lose, then I would encourage you to pick a point in time and just stop buying cards and start saving gold you will quickly develop a sense of when you have enough cards to win and when you don't. As a final note, if you are looking to climb the ranks on Board Game Arena, then I'd recommend playing exclusively at two players. As I touched on earlier, games with high player count depend more on luck as you have less blue rewards to rely on. At two players you have more control and have less chance of an opponent snowballing out of control from red rewards. There aren't the highs of a big 40 ELO gain from winning a 5 player game, but if you are actually a better player you will consistently win more matches. Hopefully these tips will help. Don't feel bad if luck hasn't been on your side, sometimes there is just nothing you can do. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I make strategy videos every week, so if that's the sort of content you enjoy, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and good luck.